Rio Hardpoint. Game four. We're up 2 1 in the in the series winners finals. Okay, off the break. We're on the more preferred side. The Paco just makes a play up these Eskies. Look at this. Our tax just must not hit. He makes a play through you and is able to get another one on our, on our point and get a, you know, help get a third one, actually. Kids gets the kill, cleans it up. Not the best break. They're just in full control now. They have bridge control. They're pushing up inside our P3. They're holding time. We get some kills, but we still have to, you know, once again, break bridge and break onto the time. They're just playing trades at this moment. Paco and Sky is holding the hill. We get onto the hill, get an A kill, finally break on in. And this is where we get, I feel like, a majority of our points just in that first rotation because the rest of this is just an absolute chain fest by them. They hold strong in the rotation, holding their lobby. They can hit off old knowing that our last two guys are going to be there. Those are big kills because now, again, once again, they're soaking old time. They're already pushed up towards P2. And they know we're spawning deep here, so we have to actually, you know, we have to go this way, and they're gonna see us going that way, or we have to push through old. And again, it's another layer on the map that we have to get past before we can break onto the P2. So the hill is popping, and we are all still spawning back P3. This is not ideal at all. Now we're kind of like split off, kind of, you know, trying to hit old, but also trying to hit towards front and new. Number eight, Paco is getting lost. We have to look for him. We know he's boxes, but he's not challenging right away. As soon as Brandon gives it up, of course, you know, Paco hits it. We get a kill on the other side. Oh, actually, Brandon wins this gunfight. That's an insane one. Okay, whatever. I thought Paco won that. Now 4v2 on Hill. They're spawning out. This is a huge break. Massive break. For some reason, I thought we didn't break this. It's been way too long since I watched this. So we end up getting the break because Brandon wins that huge one. If we don't win that one and, you know, Ant obviously doesn't win the one in the back, we, we're not breaking that. Look at this timing. AG is the one holding the P1 pinch. But as soon as he gives up the vending side or the soda side to go Eskies, this guy hits up uh, Eskies, or sorry, hits up the soda side, gets the kill on AG, can now kill someone from, uh, you know, caution over here. We still have to be worried about our front with Paco. Paco kills Brandon. Now this guy can activate while number eight is activating. You know, if you can see the arrow here, Ann is looking for this guy caution. Same with Ken. As soon as that kill goes down though, they have to look at their front. So that opens things up for Kiz. And now they break. We're spawning backside of the hill. They're holding from the front. So far so good though, from the side of New York. Red trying to make a mess of the final 15 seconds, but isn't quite able to do too much. Dash, he's still They're holding from the front. They have P3 control. Or sorry, yep. Yeah, like new spawns control. Number eight, Paco is playing useless. He can hold the bridge side, but they don't have the full control of the hill, which is why Ann is able to get through towards the front side and just get on point here. Because they have two guys that were hitting old and taking control near. This guy is the only one that can even get to the hill because obviously Paco is going to be holding the left side of the hill. So this is going to be a big one-on-one -on -one with, with Skies and Ant. Ant dies because, you know, Paco is able to finish off the kill after Skies makes him weak. So it's, it's white time now, so this is good for us, but this is not good with, with what Dante does over here. Since he is off old, we still have to account for him, but he takes the pinch through P1. He actually, like, ends up kind of squad spawning them out, and we're breaking, but we kind of have to worry about both sides here. So we have to either get this guy or focus on the on the, the guy spawning up and coming from the front side. So when you have people kind of sandwiching you, this is not a great scenario because you have to look both ways. So, you know, Ken gets that first kill, but they don't get the kill on Kismet. Kismet's still being a rat over here and we're soaking time, which is fine, but it's a really easy way for them to break because 
Now they're taking routes this way. They're breaking from this side. They're breaking from bridge side. And we just have to look at way too much. So I feel like this is just opening themselves up to a break. And we're just, you're, we're trying to play tight on Hill, but it's almost too much. Look at number eight now, number six, get someone pushing off the front side of point. They break on in, still 30 seconds left. And now they're spawning good. He will be taken down. Great moment here for New York with the flip of the spawn. 30 seconds looking strong to them here at the end of the P3. Yeah, that's beautifully played right there. Go on the sub line as everyone who was left behind. AG gets killed by Kiz here. They know one guy also hit old. That's Ant. They kill him off old. We're already pushed up towards the P4. But they have some positioning, again, still towards P3. They're still spawning in the back here. Number seven's already pushed up. Trying to do something... Uh, chaotic shit on our, our backside through our lobby. Huge pickup by Ant. Massive pickup. Now it's a P4 break. So for us, we just, like, we need this hole to get back and stay in the game because if they get, if we get broken on this, it's, it's pretty bad. Ant's playing in this corner. He gets a freebie, but one guy has already gotten through. Look at this timing. As soon as Ant's going to the left side of P1 to play this corner, this guy goes to the right side. And this timing completely fucks up what we're trying to do here because he thinks he has all of mid. So he's going to get this first kill, thinks he has all of mid for us. We don't really have to worry about our pinch. But number five is still here. You know, now he gets traded out. Who is this? Ken also dies on the backside. And now instead of, you know, two guys or three guys pushing from their side, we also have number five to worry about on, on the back side. And they're just breaking from every side. We spawn a little bit deeper now. This is an easy break for them coming from both sides. They break on in. They're holding from the much more preferred side. They spawn a little bit deeper now. Now they can kind of watch for this, you know, ant pinch over here too. They're holding good. 44 seconds still left on this, and they're up by 20 points. That's why Kiz is able to read Ant here. You know, he he spawns deeper so he can like kind of play for any P3 pinch. Gets the kill there. Now this is just a hard break. When you're trying to break from the P2 side, it's it's just so much more difficult. They can kind of funnel you. We do we do get them off point, but uh, it's just too much. When they can just hold you from boxes and hold the white truck if they get to there, it's it's just too hard. You're already sending a couple players off the rotation. So can Kenny get anything done alongside Fred? They ball fall. Now at least the sky's on. And it's pushed up towards P5. Don't want to give him that kill because if he earned that cruise missile. But we still have to worry about these guys old. Because we didn't win the gunfights old, they, they can now put pressure on us through the front side or through mid. And just because we have bridge doesn't mean we have like map control, if that makes sense. Everything about this rotation. Shotzi trying to put pressure on the Sid, but. They get a kill on AG, they get a kill on Ant. They know they can just bang hill. We actually spawned way far out. Holy fuck. Because uh, I guess the P4 is still up. Yeah, number three. Number three spawns when the old is still up. So he gets the white time spawn. And then... Uh, yeah, still, you know, number two spawns with him. So he spawns super deep. And this is just another breaking scenario for them. So we're just getting put in a, you know, a cycle where we're just not holding anything. Because we're just not in good situations and we're not putting ourselves in good situations. Leaving things open and letting people get through in areas. Actually, someone is able to jump on in, and if you are Optic Texas, you're a little bit too scattered. We got to get a team push in. Need something. It's not coming at any form. Uh, I mean, this has just been, again, the same start to Karachi. New York is just picking apart. And then we're still spawning I mean, super deep. Been, again, the same start to Karachi. New York is just picking apart Optic before they can even get a look. to even get more than two members to try to break. Staggered breaks. We're spawning deep. They're just holding the well without us getting any kills. And now at this point, we're about to be down 100 points and we need to have a good p1 but look at this like a, like we have people hit through old so that we're we're trying to get bridge for p1 which is you know the good play but we don't have the p1 yet and paco is still staying alive here p1 number seven is hitting a pinch off of his spawn trying to make things even more chaotic 
kills going in their favor over towards that bridge side. Paco wins one here. He wins another P1. Number seven is still on this pinch. He can kill number four Soda here. And they're holding P1. They know we're spawning deeper. It's it's very difficult. Kiz is making plays here, just being ratty in our caution. <laughs> it's just not a good scenario to be in. Every rotation is just not uh it is just going their way. They're they're doing they're doing well in every rotation. We're just, we just need to get killed, honestly, at a certain point. Some of these... Like, the other the other situations were just bad situations that we shouldn't have been in. Like, that end of the P5, or during that P5, we just need to get some kills to relieve pressure somewhere. Just really good hold out of them. It's just, it's very hard to break. Like, we use some teamwork there, and that's good. But they're just, they're just trading everything that we're, we're throwing at them. Now they're up 120 going into the P2. Not gonna lie, I was thinking this is just absolutely trucked. I was getting ready to go up on the stage to talk about Invasion Search. But we get the kills off old. We know they're gonna be funneling through the street side. We're staying alive on hell. We're, we're just putting really good pressure down this this ramp getting these kills really good job he's got to keep it simple win the holds win the rotations win the holds win the rotations and gets a kill on kiz he goes up soda side but that leaves once again the esky side open kind of similar to what happened with ag in that first in that first uh scenario but ant makes a play where he gets deep into their p3 so now he's like kind of playing ahead but once again, he's playing ahead, but because of that timing, it fucks us over for this P2. Because of this one timing that happens here. So I like the play, it's just unfortunate, like, we kind of have, I mean, they just double pinch, so we're not expecting a double pinch like this. He gets the one timing where, you know, he's not looking because, you know, Ant's not expecting both to be there, and them not to get the timing because they're going up the different areas of the, of the P1. And, you know, Paco gets through onto time, gets a kill. They're spawning close now. They break onto the hill. We're spawning deep. So we have P3 rotation, but we just give them 30 seconds in a, in a scenario where we really can't give them 30 seconds because it's, you know, they're up 100, 110 or whatever. So playing tight again, just making sure, just making sure that we hold P3 because at this point we, we can't, we have no mistakes to work with. Big kill or two piece by Brandon on old side. So we don't have to worry about our P2 side. AG gets a kill bridge side. So we've settled down everything. We know they're spawning a little bit deeper. We're holding our mid. We're holding our left and right side. We have one guy soaking the hill. They don't check Ant in this corner. So he can get a free kill or two. He gets some help through mid. Last guy live boxes. Just really good, really good hold. Simple hold. We're just getting kills. Ant gets pushed up once again. We're holding our backside. We're holding our boxes. Holding our left side. Good job. Ant's still staying alive. They actually spawn close here in this scenario because uh, because Ant is is kind of going rogue in in the deep spawn, I guess. Ant comes back to hill because he needs to help. Wins the one-on-one -on, -one on skies. Now we're still soaking. So this is good. We know they're spawning. We're spawning out, or they're spawning out. We just have to get over to P4 again. Keep it simple. Keep the hold simple. Get over to new towards new. If we hold the P4, we're literally right back in it, and it's a it's a 50-50 on the P5 basically. So we hold old. In their scenario, they want to hit old so that they can try and get the closer spawns. Kind of grind, again, grind the, the hill out. So Ken is going to try and help Ann at old here. Ann dies. Ken realizes that he has to hold the back for them. Try and, you know, continuously contest these spawns. Huge two-piece. If he dies here, it's, it's a very, very different scenario. Gets the two-piece. We're still spawning useless. 
So Ant can refill, hold the pinch. Ken can go bump into time or like help towards time. Ant knows this guy's boxes too. He can see this. All right, he got called out by somebody. I think he got called out by number four here. Yeah. Brandon calls him out boxes, so that's why Ant looks for him boxes. The rest of the guys are going to play towards time. Once Ant gets his kill, he knows that like they just have to look forward. So he's going to help him forward. He actually backs up because he wants to make sure that no one's uh, doing some type of P1 pinch. And in case Ken can't get it off spawn, that timing, just to make sure. But once Kenza comes off spawn, I would assume he just goes right back. Yeah, so he once, he, once Ken can actually pick it up, he's going to go help towards the hill. Oh, good two-piece by Caesar, but again, Ken is there for the trade. We're just quick, fast to make the move, fast to make the decision, quick to help each other on the map. Ken gets a two-piece. We're still holding, and once again, you know, we're holding this P4. We're, you know, we're still making these trades happen. We get the kill boxes, we get the kill front. Gotta get over towards new, because we're still down a pretty good amount. And now the... the you know, the P5 is basically a 50-50. We're, I'm, in my opinion, we're just back in the game at that point. We just needed that 3-4 chain to get back in the game. 50-50 here at P5. Just have, have to have a good rotation to it. And takes a super deep route. Sib actually picks this up. I'm, I'm, this is a, this is a good play by, by Dante for, you know, not only, not only picking this up, but picking it up in like a deep corner where he has everything on the pinch, basically. So Ant looks for this, but you know Dante is keen on it. So good play by Dante. We have two players before his new. We're trying to teamwork. AG huge two piece playing off of Ken. So Ken is going to be playing towards the bridge. AG is playing, you see, on uh, on the hop up right here. So he's basically using Ken as bait in this moment uh, because both these guys run towards the top bridge, and AG's there just to help him cross. Because Ken is taking the direction or the attention from three different people here. The guy he, like, AG first killed, or this guy, sorry, the guy uh, at the truck, and the guy uh, also sliding, Paco here. So good teamwork. This is a 2v3, basically. 2v3. 2v3 on rotation. Massive rotation. Now, at this point, I'm thinking, we get this trade, I'm like, wait, we can win this game. What the fuck? You know? So we're holding this well. We're getting pushed up because we have the spacing to do so. Ant's staying alive here towards his truck. We can hold our mid because Ant has all of this for us. He's just, you know, basically, you know, teamwork mid. Number four and number three are there for it. We have number one soaking time. He can help out Ant towards the street. They get the two kills P1. Ken has to kind of finesse. He gets one, stays alive somehow, works off uh, off Ant. Look at this! Look at these teamwork plays. We're just in the right areas to help each other out at all moments. You know, all these people die back and forth, boom, boom, boom. But we are we're the ones to end up winning the trade battles each time. Uh, that's why, like, dude, I thought everything was going our way. They were doing everything they needed to to get back in this game. That's why I really thought we were going to win this going into this P1. We were playing this so well. Like, I, I kind of want to do a uh, specific analysis just on this, like, little combat because the, the way that these guys were teamworking, this specific part of the map, like, these last three hills was the only way. It was, like, some Doctor Strange shit. The only way that we even had a chance to win this map. So they, they get some really important kills off of old. And now we're spawning deep. We're in the lead now, mind you. So like we were down, what, 120 points? We're in the lead now. It comes down to a P1. They're holding Sean the P1. They have C uh, Sib watching the pinch out. But he's going to have to meet with, with two of our guys. It's going to be Ken and AG over here. Ken dies. He gets AG as well. Huge plays by, by Dante. He gets both of them. So we send two of our resources to go pinch. And he kills both of them. We don't even go one for one. They die towards P3. They're holding hill now. Dante comes out to, to help uh, the spawners. 
because we actually got a kill towards old and this other guy pushing through towards the arcade. That's Ant here. Ant somehow reads Paco and gets his kill here because, you know, Ant and, and uh, Brandon did their job on this side of the map, but, you know, Dante completely shut us down on, on the other side. So this could have been even better for us if we just won one for one over there. Ant gets through towards the P1. Or sorry, uh, under P5 to, to hit out like a pinch on this P1 because, you know, he knows that one guy's on time. The other guy was Dante towards caution here. So he thinks he has his timing. He does. Um, you know, Dante ends up going up towards the bridge and playing for Brandon here. But Ant does have a timing here where he can, he can hit up a, a nasty pinch. So we're playing off of Ant here. He's probably telling Ken to stay alive. He gets a kill on Skies. Look at this. As soon as... Who is it? Kiz turns around to try and kill Ant. Ant's already gone. Ken can play for this. He gets a free kill on the front side. Ken gets a two-piece. He knows that, that Brandon died towards bridge. He's looking for the bridge guy. Boom. Everything is traded. Everything is just within their positioning, knowing where the enemy team is going to be trying to hit us out or, or work us. And we're just playing off of the other person that we're working with. Paco pushes up towards the P3 stairs. We get him. Now we're holding. At this moment, I think we're just going to win the map, the map. So, 40 seconds left on P1. 225 to 236. We're holding the, the, the middle side. We're, we don't have bridge control, so we're holding the, the, the bridge pinch. That's what AG is doing here. We just have to make sure that we're watching, you know, once again, our U, and we're watching our bridge. Um, you know, off of this spawn, Ken's going to help uh, Ant watch like Eskies because Ant is, is watching the bending obviously Ant or sorry first Ken is Ken is just looking for the the boxes pinch just in case they they got a close respawn and, and took this type of pinch which you would see a lot but they got a, a deeper spawn here so they weren't going to pinch um, you know Eskies that way but regardless he kills Dante huge kill on the Eskies now they're trying to break from you Kiz stays alive I thought Ant makes the fucking play here. Ant, after this kill happens, activates Soda. So, you know, instead of Paco hitting up Soda, because Dante dies, Paco's going to hit up Skis to try and get the trade. Ant flanks around, activates wall that's happening, wraps around. He's going to kill Paco for it. And then he's going to wrap around again. They still have to look for him. But Kiz is still live here. Reads this. Really good play out of Kiz. And then he's able to get a, a, a second kill, or sorry, um, he's able to uh, buy time for Caesar, who's going to get a two-piece here. So Caesar gets one guy weak, and then he gets the second kill on Ken, who is already weak. I thought, like, that was just a, a massive play by Kiz to read that, but I thought, you know, I thought Ant made the, the actual play there. Um, unfortunately, though, the guys you side end up breaking on into the hill. They end up getting some kills over here to, to stuff our, you know, first initial push. Uh, first, obviously, we couldn't win off the P1 here because we just couldn't break it in, in time. But they're already towards new. You see Kismet already taking them out towards new. They even, you know, Paco wins this this one-on-one, -on -one, which is probably the biggest gunfight of the map. Because if, who is this? I think AG. Yeah, if AG wins this one, he, then he is able to instantly go court uh, caution and break with uh with ken over here so huge two-piece i mean paco literally wins in the map getting that two-piece ken's the only one here he has a one-on-one -on, -one on new sees kismet on the car he actually um gets the, the the spawner which is skies over here and ant is able to kill kismet with a nade on the cop car so the time is white and it also had paco who is P1 pinching boxes. So we knew that this guy was going to be towards boxes. Or we should have. I mean, we knew he was P1. I mean, I guess we could have looked boxes, but at this moment, it's 248. We kind of just have to look forwards um, and just hope that this guy isn't here or just trade him if he is. Um, but I think, I think what after the map, Ken was surprised that, you know, Dante wrapped gate here. And I was pretty surprised here too, because Dante off spawn, instead of you know coming flooding in time, he wraps fully to gate. So if we were just looking at this, we kill him and then we get on time and we win, basically. But we're not expecting him to wrap gate. 
Um, and you know, Don or Paco gets a two piece on the on the backside of our break here. Ken doesn't know that this guy's gonna be wrapping gate, and uh, and Dante wins it for them. So good plays by then of the map there from from them on that P1 and P5. But I, dude, I really thought we had it going into that P1. We were making such good plays on that the P3 to P4 and the P4 to P5 and all three of those hills and even the rotation or like the first break on in to that P1 was was really good honestly so i i was just too little too late we we just started way too way too cold so unfortunately they end up winning that map and uh they force a game 5 honestly really 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 fun map to watch um you know looking back on it obviously it wasn't found fun for us like in the moment that shit was stressful but like going into you know, actually watching it back and seeing what happened, it was a, it was kind of a banger.